Sorry, your name again? Sorry? No, no, no. Your last name? Kunda. Kunda. Yeah, I. Uh, your name is supposed to be your last name, not your best. <laughs> I don't know, but. <laughs> Are you having trouble adjusting? I thought we've been doing it for a long time now. You're supposed to kind of like adjust the knob below. There's a knob and then... Um, All right, so if there are no questions, um, we'll continue off. Hopefully, we finish off. Not hopefully, actually. We, we are supposed to finish off the, um, this, our discussion of the so-called um, Sorry about that. Our discussion of uh, data encoding, so I don't know. <sighs> Sorry about that. I don't think people are going to be very happy with what you've done, but. It's fine? Is it fine? Are you just saying yes because you're sitting next no, to him or something? Um, <laughs> it still looks a bit blurry though. Is it my glasses? It's fine? Okay. All right, so, so before we start, I, I thought we'd, uh, we'd have a, a bit of a discussion about some some things that I thought were pretty straightforward, really. Um, this is mostly tied to the, the tech home, right? There's a reason why instructions are specified whenever you're doing something, you know? Um, but what we noticed was that people are just, they, they just decided to disregard the instructions, really. Um, you know, there was a separate, there was a, sub, a separate quiz for quiz 11 and quiz 12, but we have characters in here that, for whatever reason, decided to merge the two assignments, and then you upload them as one. Why? Why would you even do that, right? And then the vast majority of people in this class, right, I mean, the, the instructions, right, tell you to say, you know, submit, Submit your solution using this file name. But what do you do? Um, I don't know if you are high or you are drunk or something. You decide to, no, but this is true because it just doesn't make, make sense, right? You decide to use your own, your own file name. There's a reason why you need to adhere to these instructions. It turns out that there, there might be situations when we might you know, want to automatically process some of these assessments, right? So this is really important. And I'm mentioning this because the next time you make this mistake, you get a zero automatically because the instructions are supposed to be part of the assessment, right? These are simple things, right? Perhaps the, 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 the easiest thing you probably do is specify the, the correct name, the correct file name before you upload the assessment, right? Um, and then again, I mean, Oh, people are uploading Word documents, right? And I know who. <laughs> yes, you and Luke Wes, Luke Wes, right? I think it was just two people. I know you because you brought up this issue, right? The next time you do this, you get a, you get a zero. You don't 
when it says PDF, it doesn't mean you change the extension. We say this, an extension is just convention, right? You're supposed to convert it explicitly from one format to the other, right? So don't do that again. Um, and you find like comments, I think you've seen the comments on your, on your scripts. So those, those of you that are bothered to look at the, the math scripts, right? Um, and then, funny enough, right, there were, well, not funny enough, I guess, I thought this was really strange. There were people that literally decided to upload blank documents. I don't know if they thought, uh, oh, he's not going to mark this, he's just going to give marks, like dream, dream about marks to give people. No, these things are marked, right? Script by script. So there are people that just decided to upload blank document, right? You open it and it's blank. <laughs> and, and, and really, I thought, I thought, my thinking is that all these tech home quizzes are supposed to be easy marks for you because unlike the, the in-class quizzes where you have 11 minutes or is it 13 minutes, you have literally more than 24 hours to work through these things, right? Why? And then I sent, I sent an email sometime last, um, I don't know if it was Friday, I think, after class, to say there was an extension. Those of you that did not manage to upload your solutions, upload your solutions, right? We extended the deadline. Only two people bothered to, to upload, right? The rest just didn't. I don't know if they've fallen off, I don't know if they've quit the course or something, but at least I'm trying, or I tried anyway. Um, Quiz 11 was it? The take home quizzes, right? Can, can I ask a question? How, the, the, there's a question that had to do with uh, implementation of the 3 to 1 backup strategy. The calculations. How did people figure out how, like what the total size of the lecture slides were? Sorry? I'm sorry? What was the question? It says the lecture slides archived on the mood, right? So how did you calculate those? How did you, what process did you go through? Yes? Why are you excluding them? <laughs> well, we said things that are archived on the mood. What's archived on the mood? Have you seen this? Lecture slides used in class, right? Why, why are you, here's the thing, right? Why, why can you not follow simple instructions? Why do you decide to, and you are the culprit who did not submit, right? The solution. Why did you, you're not the only one, there are plenty more. Where is, where is uh, Caleb? Doesn't even come to class, right? Why, why, <laughs> why can't you just go there, download these things, calculate the size, <laughs> instead of making things up? Why are you, why are you manufacturing questions? Why are you, create, why are you recreating questions? Say lecture slides archived on the Moodle. These are the things that are archived on the Moodle. All you had to do was download all these things, Calculate the size. I think there's probably like less than 10 people that managed to do this, right? <laughs> yes? Yeah, but why are you excluding the handouts? <laughs> and then, and then, and this is, a, this is another thing, right? The question says, uh, implement, uh, tell us how you're going to implement the backup strategy. What do you decide to do? You go off on a tangent and you start explaining what the three, two, one backup strategy is. No, implementation means you tell us specifics of what you're going to do, it's you, right? How are you going to do it? So I'm supposed to say I. <laughs> no, well, well you, could, you could have said that. I mean, it's, it's not about the English here. It's not, it has nothing to do with the grammar, but you're supposed to specify the backup mediums, right? You just don't say, I'll use cloud storage. You tell us exactly what you're going to use. You know, so you load. Yeah, that's what it means to implement something, right? That's what it means. If I, if I ask you to say, Tell me the, the steps of moving from here to the vet hostels. Are you going to say, you walk there? You tell me exactly how you're going to go there, right? Which path are you going to take? Are you going to pass through Confucius Institute or whatever? But anyway, um, <laughs> now I've, I've literally given up, right? Quiz number 12. There, were peop there are people in this class, right, that literally failed to convert 2022 base 10 to base 2. Like you have 40, you had 48 hours to do this, right? You literally failed to do this. Now if you're failing to do this, right? In two days, if you're failing to do this, how are you going to do this in the exam, really? 
That is serious, right? I mean, what, what's stopping you from using your calculator to verify if the solution that you've arrived at is actually the correct solution? Why? Why are you doing this? Uh, and then this, I, I guess this was the final straw here, right? I, 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 I sat there and I'm like, I sat in there and I, I listen, I've decided I'm, we're going to spend a couple of minutes here discussing this because this is really important. When I was marking this, I, I was shocked, right? Because. <laughs> There, there are probably like, I think, three or four people that managed to do what was perceived or considered to be the correct thing, right? Like, using sign magnitude to evaluate this expression. Really? Converting D2 base 16 to base 2. People literally failed to do this. And, and the, the, really the depressing thing is, I, I always ask if you have questions, right? If you have concerns. Um, I've deliberately, I guess, set aside, is it what? Um, nine to 13 every Friday as office hours where you can freely come up there and seek clarification if things are not making sense, right? Um, if you don't come up there, if you're not asking questions, the assumption I'm going to make, or the assumption I make, in fact, the assumption that any normal human being will make is that things are making sense, right? But then an assessment comes, and people are get, getting five out of, uh, 0 0.5 out of 10, right? Just answering one question. Well, I guess the consolation is almost everyone got A base 16, you know, um, but people failed to convert this D2, base 16 to base 2, literally failing, right? Sorry? It has nothing to do with the format. No, the way it was. No. Nope. Yeah, and you are, and, and I thought initially I thought, in fact, if you remember, I'd, I'd mentioned that I would, I would actually give marks to people that thought it was D two one six, right? But it turns out you and perhaps Miss Mwanza are probably the only people. Everybody else did figure out that this was actually base sixteen. So there's a few people in here that did not think that this was base sixteen, and your script, you, in your script, you did the right thing, right? So it has nothing to do with that. Yes. Are you going to do the same thing with the Lexus 9's calculation? Because most of us thought it's just a, a lot of people that are You don't what? We thought it's just a, a lecture. What, what did you understand by the question, Lexus slides archived on the Moodle? What did you understand? Those, but the last year after, the last year When you go to the Moodle, what, what does it say, the, the section where these things are? No, it's not. These are two different files. One of them is four up, one of them has the single slide on, so, on the thing. Now, seeing that most of us... Were, well, you lost yeah. marks. I mean, there's, there's not... Uh, except I think... Uh, now, I think, I think... I could be wrong, but I think... I think... Uh, I think Kunda here might, might be one of the people that did... I don't know if it's you or the other Kunda here. Okay, I mean, but I think it's Kunda BM, which is you. Uh, he at least managed to, or if it's the other Kunda, he at least managed to figure out what was going on, right? Did the right thing. How about just converting the, the whole zip file, then you check the size, then... What's it? Why, why is it? Which zip file are you talking about? For let's say size from 1 to 18. Which zip file? From Moodle. Is, is there a zip file on Moodle? Yes, it is. Okay. I, I didn't know there was a zip file. Where is it here? <laughs> Oh, Sorry? What is the importance? Mm, when you, you have you, lecture slides. When you have lecture slides? Yes, because more... Oh, the handouts are meant for printing. So if, if you are one of those people who still wants to print things, the handout has four slides on one A4 paper. So you cut down on the amount of money you're going to spend when you print them out. Okay. So looking at what the question... So it's just one and the same thing. That's it. It's the same content, but it's formatted differently. No, this was part of the question because the question said so. It was part of the question, and, and really, what I was expecting, what I was expecting, was for people to go to Moodle, download these things, measure them, right? You calculate the size, <laughs> and then you do your calculations. Yes. 
right? Yes. This is what they hand right? Sorry? Like this is using this, right? This what? is using the handout, right? Oh, this is a handout as well. You're, what, do, what do you understand by a handout? They're all handouts, right? All of these are handouts. Right, it's just that the way they are formatted is different. A handout is something that you're going to give out to the students. Right? That's what you call a handout. You're going to give these things to the students so that they refer to them. That's what it means. I guess maybe you want me to rename these to instead of, uh, well, this is going to be a handout as well, but this is one up, this is four up. Is that what you want me to do? I would do that then. We change the naming format. Yes? Yeah, but the, the marks were being awarded for the co co correct calculation, right? This, it's wrong. So you need to explain how Yeah, I mean, you, you get zero because it's wrong. <laughs> Guys, uh, so one of, the, one of the reasons why I decided, excuse me. So one of the reasons why I decided to have this conversation with you is because next week we have a test. You better read up on these things. The test, the test is going to be from lecture series um, 16 up to 18 right, all the way up to this, this, uh, this class that we're wrapping up today. Um, I'll ask again, before we proceed, between lecture series number 16 and what we've covered so far, are there things that don't make sense to you? Okay, what, what's, what's not making sense? Mm -hmm. If you start with the one you negative, now you find that here you are given a number in positive and on the far left side there's a one, it's not given Yes, tell, tell yes. Explain. You consider the one that's this side. When you inside something, you consider the one that's on your far left, not on your far right. That's what determines what's negative and positive. Is that true? What determines the negative and positive are the ones on your car. So yes, you have it. On your car, they put your car. For example, on your car. Are you not, have you, are you started looking at uh, tutorial? Tutorial sheet number eight with Nunde. You want to, if you're finding this difficult, number systems, right? And, and to be honest with you, it's probably, this is where you should get the free marks from. This is the easiest, one of the easiest things we're going to cover here, right? Because, come on, it's like grade, grade seven stuff here, right? So if you're still finding challenges, right, with number systems, I highly recommend that you attend the tutorial sessions that are going to involve tutorial sheet number eight with Nondi. And I've, we've told Nondi to make sure that he prioritizes that because of the, the tests that we have next week. So this week and maybe part of next week, what you'll be doing is you'll be busy with tutorial sheet number eight. Tutorial sheet number nine will be um, tied to lecture series number 18. So you want to attend that as well because it's going to involve everything. The, the test is going to involve all of these things. Yes. Yes. You're saying you have what? Here we go again, 15. And then? Okay, tell us what 15 in binary is. Yes. Okay. What is the question though? Yeah, but we had a conversation about this. We said, we said what? If you're given a question like this, right? 
The first thing you have to do is you determine what range it falls under. Right? You just can't assume that this is going to be four bit representation. There's a process you go through. And in fact, this is what this question was in part trying to, um, trying to assess us on. Right? So what you do is, what, 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 what power of two is going to take into account a number like minus 15? Okay, using, using, sign, using signed integers, if we use two bit representation, what range of numbers are we going to, to have access to? Negative? Two to the power? Sorry? So it's negative two to the power? Sorry? For four bit representation, okay. So it's, it's what? Two minus one. Minus one. With, so using four bit representation, we're trying to. Uh huh. Up to what? <laughs> okay. Up to what? So this is what? Negative? Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make people understand. He's saying, how do you represent this, a number like this using 4-bit representation? How do you know it's 4-bit representation? How, how do you just decide to say you're going to represent negative 15 using 4-bit representation? It's a systematic process. You have to figure out what the correct number of bits are going to be. And you see here that four is not going to work because the range of numbers that you have access to is minus eight up to positive seven. So meaning, meaning that you go to the next number, which is, so you can only represent negative 15 using five bit representation. This is exactly what happened here. Right? For those of you that bothered to look at this. So again, if you, if you are still confused with this um, and, and revising or going through the notes doesn't help, attend the tutorial sessions with Nonde. If still that doesn't help, tell me we can have like some sort of recitation or something where we can regurgitate the things that we've already discussed. Tell me, right? All right, so we continue our discussion uh, of data representation and really we've, we've kind of like covered, um, we now know how text is represented, we know how colors are encoded, we know how images are encoded. Interestingly enough, we had a discussion about how um, so-called video uh, or motion picture gets to be represented and we are, realize that it's nothing more than um, a combination of sound and, um, and images. Right? Images presented to us in rapid succession and we actually got to discover that um, these days videos are typically encoded using 25 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Right? You can see this, I mean if you download a video from YouTube, typically it's almost always the case that you see that when five frames per second or 30 frames per second. Um, if you want to have some fun looking at this, you can just go to YouTube and try and look at uh, videos from let's say the early 1900s and you realize that the, the, the number of frames per second that uh, a sort of motion picture was using was substantially lower than what we use right now, which is why it looks funny, right? It's almost like a series of uh, still images, like a PowerPoint slide, like what I'm doing right now, you know. Um, um, and then to, to help kind of like emphasize this whole notion of frames per second, what we did was we, we used the same example um, video footage here, which is just uh, one, one minute and 39 seconds long to just try and empirically determine the number of frames associated with this video footage and it turns out that it's roughly 2,970 frames per second. We realize that we can calculate the number of frames associated with any given video footage, right? In fact, if you want to have even more fun with this, what you can do is uh, extract, extract, the, extract the frames associated with all these different resolutions, right? So 144p all the way up to, I guess, uh, 4K. And you realize that the, 
images, right, the things that you're going to extract, these use the same resolution as, as what you'd compute, right? When you, so if this is, let's say 720p, we know that we can, we can calculate the, the total number of pixels that the video is going to be composed of. If we can calculate the total number of pixels that that video is encoded using, then we can determine the total number of pixels that are associated with each of these individual still images. Turns out it's the same, right? And, and we know that it's easy to calculate this. All we have to do is uh, uh, know the aspect ratio that was used to create that, that, that video. These days, a 16 to nine aspect ratio, a la the one that I used to create my slides, if you've noticed, right, is common. In fact, your phones are created like that as well, right? 16 to nine aspect ratio, right? Apparently, it results in a visually appealing, or visually appealing images and videos, right? Um, as in when you watch it like this, yeah? Uh, compare and contrast with how um, video or like slides were, were created. It was like a four to three ratio. And it's not, it's not uncommon to come across video where, and I think you've seen this on YouTube, a video doesn't occupy the entire screen. You find that there's black patches like on the left and right. The aspect ratio that those videos use is slightly different. It could be like four to three, for instance, right? So we say if, if a video like this is using, um, well, I know it's a 16 to nine aspect ratio, then we know that if we're using a 144p, um, a, a video with a resolution of 144p, then we can compute the corresponding what width, right? Because we know that the 144p means the height, the number of pixels vertically, aligned vertically are going to be one, uh, what, 144, right? So using the aspect ratio, you can compute the number of pixels that are going to be laid out horizontally. Do you understand? When you're given 720p, what does the P stand for? Ms. Mlenga. What does the P stand for? Sorry? No, it's not pixel. It's a technique that is used to render video. It's called like, uses is it progressive scanning or something. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you might find video that is specified as not being 720p, but 720i, right? So the P, do not be misled. When you see seven, and don't lie to people, say, no, nah, in ICT 11.10, we meant this, the P means pixels. No, it doesn't, right? It means something else. Right, but that's besides the point. Well, it means the video, the video is, is encoded using a technique called progressive scanning where all the pixels are going to be laid out on each frame before you view it, right? Uh, as, as opposed to an interlaced technique. So, but bottom line here is the P, even though you, you might get away with saying, oh, the P is pixels, but it's not pixels, it's, yeah, anyway. Just thought I'd mention that. But we can calculate we can calculate this, right? We know that, which is good stuff. Okay, um, and then we, we actually, now we understand why it's important when you're on YouTube, when you're streaming on YouTube, why it's important for you to, to, um, to explicitly tell YouTube to say, you know what? I don't want to watch this video in full HD. Instead, I will perhaps watch it in 360p. So 360p is pretty decent, it's fine. I watch, well, it depends, I guess, on your eyes, but I watch, I use standard 360p because I know it's, um, it's, it's a perfect, I, I get to compromise on the amount of money that I would spend on data, right? Um, the amount of time it would take for me to watch the video, right? And the quality, right? So that, don't just go on YouTube and stream things and start complaining that uh, the mobile service provider is stealing bundles from you, no. You want to explicitly specify the, the resolution. When you're sharing videos, it's bad form for you to say, I'm going to, to share a 720p video to somebody. I mean, who does that, right? It should be considered the fact that people are going to have to use up a lot of their bundles if you share a video file with a significantly higher resolution. These are things to think about. But we discuss all these different, uh, um, I guess, things to take into account here. So what's the resolution of um, those pirated you, you would have to ch check, it depends. Some pirated movies, a lot of them actually come in, uh, in a 
much higher resolution, depending on where you're getting them from. So things that you get using torrents, for instance, this is like, you, you, you're bound to find like something in 1080p, for instance. I'm talking about the ones that are not yet legal for download, but people are downloading them, and then those ones you get to find that they've got a really poor picture quality. So it, again, it depends on where, where you are getting them from. So one way of looking at this is, Whoever had the original source of the illegal movie you're talking about probably had a high resolution video. Right? Unless if you're referring to, you know there are characters that will go to the movie, to the theater, right? And it's like one of those uh, recent movies and you decide to use your phone, right? Yeah? If you're talking about that, that's different because you're compromising the quality of the video that you're going to share with people. You know what I'm talking about? When you go to the theater and then you use your phone, I don't know how you hold on to the phone for like almost two hours, right? Yeah, you get that and then you share, you pirate that, right? The quality is going to be dependent on the device that you're using to get that video. If you're referring to that, then, uh, but if you're referring to like a full-fledged uh, movie that is perhaps included in a, in a much lower resolution, then the problem is with the person who shared that particular file. Perhaps what they were thinking about is, uh, you know what, what's important is that I share a much smaller file so that you know, people can easily download this. Okay, so on the hub, I hope people are not sharing uh, low quality stuff. Uh, please, uh, don't share illegal things. Um, we're recording this, don't share illegal things. Okay. Although they won't know, right? Um, okay, so again, I mean, uh, again, I decided to double back to look at some issues that we discussed in the past, and like how long it would take to download the different. So if you have, if you have these different video, uh, the videos encoded with different resolutions, right? From 144p all the way up to 4K. You realize that as the quality improves, the size of the video also increases, right? So, can't remember what I was about to say here, but something Where's taken to. Sorry? The last one is. Um, so here's the thing, and, and this, this discussion actually came out saying, um, who'd want to watch a video that's one minute long in 4K and you're uh, using your Zamtel bundles? You would be spending, uh, uh, someone told us this was like three quarters or something. Five. five quarters. Is it worth it for you to spend five quarters to watch a video that's one minute, 32, 39 seconds long? I don't know, right? If I were you, I would, I would like I said, I compromise on 360, 360p, and 360p should be somewhere. Can't see here. Uh, there we go. So if you look at the size, instead of I would, I would literally just use up three megabytes instead of the 200 megabytes. This is the same video I watched. Quality is pretty decent. Right? Yes. So like, when you're talking about the size of the video, right? Sorry. Like when you're talking about the size of the video. Yes. Something that is online you're watching, right? Does that size really like when you have um, whatever band you have bought, right? Let's say you have what, um, 500 MB. Yes. And then the, the video is like 400 MB. Does it mean that um, the size that it has like 400 MB applies to watching it online or downloading it? It's actually both, and it turns out that, um, you know, people have a misconception when, there's a misconception that arises when you're talking about um, um, how much, how much bandwidth you're using, right? So people will say, oh no, but I downloaded a 200, a 200 MB file and I used more bundles. It turns out when you're downloading stuff, you're doing a whole bunch of things, and Edward should have taught us in 1020, right, about um, what happens when you're accessing content online, for instance. You make requests, right? Those requests, it turns out you're using bandwidth. Of course, it's not a lot of bandwidth, but you're, you're using bandwidth. So the total amount of like bundles that you're going to use up are not going to be exactly the size of the file that you're downloading. It's going to be slightly more. Yes? Because of the no, but when you're downloading, it's the same as watching, you're still making that request. It's the same thing. The amount of content that you're going to pull is the same thing. But um, if I were you, I would download. Why? Because when I downloaded, if I downloaded this video, for instance, instead of having everybody else here download it, I'll just share the downloaded video, right? Not via WhatsApp. Maybe when I'm on the Unza network or something, share it or something. I don't know if people use share it. Yeah. 
Do you understand what I mean here? It's the same thing. You see, when you're streaming video from YouTube or whatever um, um, streaming, streaming website or web portal you use, it's the same thing. Downloading is the same as you streaming it directly. It's just that when you're downloading, you're going to keep a local copy of that file so that when you want to watch it again, you don't have to spend more bundles, right? Instead, you just access it locally. Okay. So, so, no, so what I said was that typically when you, what you should do, right, when you're taking these videos and photos, what you want to do is uh, check the, um, the aspect ratio that you're using. So typically what I said was that, I know this phone uses a 16 to 9 ratio, right? So meaning that each video that I take is going to use this particular ratio. So if I have, uh, if, if I have, um, um, if I have uh, a 1080p video, and I know that I used, I, I'm using a 16 to 9 ratio, not a 4 to 3, what I, what, I, what, what I can do then is determine, I just need to identify the greatest common divisor here, right? And, and then I can, well, I just have to divide this by, uh, this by 9 and then multiply the result by 16 to get the, 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 the horizontal side. Right? If I say the ratio here is 16 to 9, and I have ratio is 16 to 9, we did ratio 16 to 9. If I have 1080 here, what am I going to have here? Jesus Christ. Right? Do you understand now? Okay. Do you understand where I'm getting this, the, the number from, the result? Can someone compute this? What is 1080 times 16 divided by 9? Sorry? 1000? Yeah, so it should, should, should correspond to what you have somewhere here. Um, so if you, if, you check for, if you check for 1080, anything with 1080p will have this number that, that he's saying is the result here. Right? If I was using a 4 to 3 ratio, it would be different. Okay, and then we started our discussion of sound and we said really sound, sound um, this encoding of sound really is done uh, in two main ways. I mean, you have to think about uh, converting the sound to digital form and then converting the digital form to analog, right? Because, um, well, in the first instance, uh, you need to convert the analog sound into digital form so that it's stored here, but then when you share the digital, uh, the, digital the, the sound that's been converted to digital form, somebody else has to, when they're listening to it, it has to be converted from digital form to analog, right? Um, and we said that it's, it's quite simple, really. What happens is um, two techniques are used. Uh, this whole notion of sampling rate, where you specify, so think about this sound wave, right? <clears throat> so we're saying that we, we take into account two things. Number one, the range of values that we are going to use as we are converting from analog to digital. And then number two, this is your time, by the way, this is the amplitude, I guess, and then this is the time. And then you also need to take into account how frequently you are going to be taking these values. This is determined by the bit depth, right, similar to the color depth. This is going to be determined by the sampling rate. Right, which is normally expressed in heads. So as a simplified example, if we said we're going to use a sampling rate of two heads, what we mean is that in every second, we're going to be taking two values. Do you understand? And you notice that as you are increasing the sampling rate, so if in one second you take two values, if you increase the sampling rate to let's say 10, what you mean is that in one second you'll be taking 10 values the more values you are getting, the better the quality of the resulting digital sound. Do you understand? The higher the bit depth, the better the quality, because it turns out that what you're interested in are the 
um, are the, um, the, the rounded off values that correspond to the bit depth that you're using. So if you're using six, yeah. if you're using, if you're using, I'm trying to see if I can explain it a lot better here. If you wanted to get a value that corresponds to this here, and the bit depth that you're using only has results that are associated to this as being here and here, what you would have to do is round this off to the nearest value. If you're using a much larger bit depth, it means that the values that you're going to, to be using here are going to be slightly more than just two here, meaning that the approximated number is going to be slightly more accurate um, to the original value that you're looking for. Okay. Maybe the drawing here was bad. So, so let's, let's assume that this, this web form that we have here is what's been converted by the microphone to, or that's been converted by the microphone, right? What we're saying is for us to convert it to digital form, what we need to do is we're taking into account the sampling rate, right? So how, how frequently we're going to be, or how many values we're going to be getting here in any given second. Normally your sampling rate is going to be expressed in hertz, right? So two hertz means you're getting two, you're going to get two samples in every second. 10 hertz means 10 samples in every second. 20 hertz is 20, 20 samples in every second. Standard is, uh, is it 44.1 thousand or kilohertz, right? Um, meaning that you're getting 44,000, roughly 44,000 samples in any given second, right? Um, but we're saying that besides, besides the sampling rate, something else that you need to take into account is the amplitude, right? Or the bit depth that you're using to, to determine what value you're going to capture. But the value you're going to capture, the accuracy of the value that you're capturing here is dependent on how many bits you're using to represent the amplitude. The larger the value, the more accurate the, the values that you're going to be capturing. Do you understand this? Okay, if, if we have, if we're using a bit depth of, if we're using a bit depth of, uh, let's, say, let's, start, let's start with four bit representation, four bits for instance. How many values are we, are we going to be working with? Jeez. Okay, okay, let's say, let's say it's two bit representation. How many, how many values are we working with? Two to the power? Okay, let's start with the, with the easiest. If we're using two bit representation as a bit depth to capture our sound here, how many values are we working with? Okay, four, right? If we're working with four values, um, hopefully one, two, three, four, perfect. If we're working with four values and we're using um, well, two bit representation, what this means is that we'd have to forget about this, right? would have to forget about this, would have to forget about this, one, two, three, four, roughly, right, approximately. So if, if I'm trying to capture this value here, what I'd have to do, because, because I'm using four-bit representation, I only have one, three, five, and seven, right? These are not absolute numbers, I'm just saying. They're scaled out, right? Okay, for a uh, player room here. Um, so if, if I want to determine what this value is, because there's no corresponding direct value that maps onto this thing, I would have to approximate it as either being a three or a five, depending on, on where it's mo much closer to. If it's much closer to a five, then I'm just going to round it off to a five. But if I'm using a much larger bit depth, uh, let's say, uh, what, what is going to result into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's say eight values? Okay, sorry? Okay, two to the power three. So if I'm using two to the power three, I'll probably have access to to these values here. Meaning that, if I'm using two to the power three, I will actually get to know that this is equivalent to this four here, instead of rounding it off to a five. Rounding it off means I'm not getting the exact value, the exact amplitude. It's an approximation. Which is, which is why if you're, if you're recording with a, with a much lower bit, bit depth, for instance, you notice that you hear a lot of noise, a lot of screeching or something. Um, sorry? 
the essence of what? When you're trying to understand how sound is converted into digital form and how the sound is going to be converted back into analog, right? Because what we're saying is, for us to understand how sound is encoded, we need to understand exactly how it's going to be converted. How is what I'm saying converted to digital form? I'm saying it's converted to digital form by taking into account two key techniques, right? The, the, the number of bits that I'm going to use to represent what I'm converting to digital form and how often I'm getting the values corresponding to what I'm saying. Remember that the, the sound that you're listening to here um, is being converted by, by microphone into electric signals. And then those electric signals are going to be converted to digital form by my sound card, right? Because there's an um, analog to digital converter, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when I share it with you, for you to listen to what has been stored in digital form, it needs to be converted back. What has been converted to digital form is not exactly as you are listening to me speak, because it's just an approximation. This, what I'm saying is it's, it's continuous, right? It's continuous data that's coming through. But what I'm storing is no longer going to be continuous data, right? It's, these are going to be discrete values, because I'm just getting samples of what I'm saying. If, I, if you record yourself speaking, and you might not really kind of like, um, I, could, I guess, easily figure this out, but you notice that the, the quality of what you're listening to is not the same as you listening to someone actually speaking. Yeah, and, and the nice way of doing this is when you, when you call mom and dad, for instance, you notice that the, the, the sound is not exactly like, it, it almost sounds like, um, I don't know how to explain this. Yes? When you are having a phone call conversation and then you record the conversation, then when you play the recording in a headset, yes. why does it seem that what you, what you were saying, you can hear it from one side, and the response that the person you are talking to, you, you get it from the other side of the headset. You, you, you are not getting it from both sides. No. Uh, no I, I think it depends. I think it depends on what you're using to record the, record the application. So, and I know what you're talking about. Usually, your the, the piece of software that excuse me, the piece of software that you're using, um, will, it, it will probably have an option where you get to decide whether it's, it's going to be rec recorded using stereo or something, or is it mono? I don't know what version it is. So it depends. I mean. It depends on the application that you're using to record the phone conversation. We don't know if it's legal. Excuse me. Yes. So what I did here, right, was I I did, I, I recorded, um, and I guess I should have also recorded them in different, using different bit representations, but this example here is just showing the different sampling rates that I use to record this. If you, if you listen to this carefully, I, I don't know if you can, I think it's not, it's not very clear, but I'll share this. If you listen to this, if you listen to this audio, these four, is it four or five audio recordings, you notice that the quality is different because I'm using, um, well, I guess the bit depth is the same, but I'm using the different sampling rates. By, by default, when I'm recording myself using my phone, I'll probably use 16 kilohertz, for instance. But if I dumb it down to eight kilohertz, which is what most of these mobile service providers do when you're talking to someone on the phone, it uses eight kilohertz, you notice that the quality is, is, is not as good as 16 kilohertz. If you, raise, if you raise the sampling rate to something like 44.1 kilohertz, you notice that the quality is even better. But what's happening is because the sampling rate means that you are getting more of those values, it means that the resulting size of the, 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 resulting size of the file is going to be significantly larger. Do you understand? No. The, same, the same goes for the, the bit depth that you're using. If you're using a, a much smaller bit depth, obviously the, the size of the, of the file that you're going to be working with is going to be much smaller, but as you're increasing the bit depth, the size 
increases. Right? Yes, there's a question. Maybe we should, yeah? You say when you're using two heads, it means you're getting two, two samples every second. Yes. Now, sir, what are these samples? Samples is just a, the quantity of something that you're getting. So we're saying that if you look at this, assume this is, um, this is, this is a one second mark. If the, if, the, if the sampling rate that I'm using is much larger, it means that I'll, I'll get, I'll get more, more samples within one second. The values, the values that you're getting. Like I said, sound is continuous, right? So for, for you to convert it to digital form, you need to determine exactly how much of what I'm saying you're going to be capturing. Like this is best seen as a, although this is not how you represent like a sound wave. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Let's let's assume I'm I'm using a sampling rate of uh, five hertz here, right? Corresponding to these values here, one, two, three, four, five, for instance. If I'm using five hertz, it means that um, whenever I have like a corresponding value on the y-axis, I'll capture one, two, three. For one, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five or something, right? Five values for five heads. What this means is that when I'm reconstructing, when I'm reconstructing the, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting this value so that I convert it to digital form, right? To convert it back to analog form so that, the, so that people can listen to what has been captured or converted to digital form, reconstructing will mean I will use the five values that I've captured. Yes, it should be per second. But if on the other hand I said I was using two hertz instead of five hertz as a sampling rate, what this means is if this is one second, I would, I would have to get maybe one, two, right? So I would have this value and this value only. Reconstructing something using just these two values is going to result in something that is not closer to the exact thing than reconstructing it using one, two, three, four, five. Does this make sense? Now this is five, this is five hertz, but what we're talking about here is not, is not actual five, it's either eight kilohertz, like the mobile phones we use eight kilohertz, right? For obvious reasons. Um, the CD, right, music that you rip off of the CD is using like 44.1 kilohertz. So you're looking at 44,000 samples in any given second that you're going to use to reconstruct it back into analog form from digital form. So what's the obvious reason why the phones use eight? Oh, because, because uh, you, want to transmit, you want to transmit that message in the shortest possible period of time. When you're talking to someone who is, let's say, in, in Solwezi or something, if you're using a much smaller sampling rate, it means the resulting payload, the resulting so size of the digital sound that you're transmitting is going to be much smaller than if you are using a much larger sampling rate. If it's smaller, then it's going to be transmitted much faster. If it's much larger, it's going to take a lot of time to transmit, right? Which is why the, the quality when you're calling someone, it almost sounds like, unless you're used to them, it sounds like they have flu or something. It's, yeah? I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, a nice way of doing this is the things that I've, uh, I've recorded myself using um, the different sampling rates. I advise you to listen to the quality. I was trying to do that, but my speakers are not very, are not very loud, I guess. But I was trying to showcase the implications of using different sampling rates. The lower the sampling rate, the poorer the, 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 poorer the quality, right? But the lower the sampling rate, the smaller the size. So, so it depends on, it depends on what you're using, it, it depends on what you're using the sound, the, the, the audio recording for, right? For my screencast, the reason why, and I've, I've switched now so that you see the difference, the reason why I use 16, 16 kilo, kilohertz is because I know that uh, the quality is not that bad, 
but the resulting size as well is manageable, right? A, t a typical lecture session like this one results in like 130 megabyte of uh, a wave file, a sound file, right? If I reduced it to let's say eight kilohertz, I would have a substantially smaller size. The implications of the size are massive. At some stage, I'll have to make the 130 megabyte sound wave file with the actual screencast, which is the video file. That combined with the sound will result in a much larger file. What that means is when I'm uploading it to YouTube, it's going to take significantly longer to upload. And it's going to use up a lot of bandwidth. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, so this is what I was saying, you know, so, uh, things that we were talking about, and really, you, you notice that uh, for, for some of these things, you can, you can literally, when you have, um, when you have, you, when you know the sampling rate, when you know the bit depth, when you know the channel, you can calculate the bit rate. If you can calculate the bit rate, if you know the bit rate, and you don't know the bit depth, but you have these two values, you can convert it to the other, right? If you have the sample rate, the bit depth, the channels, and the length of the recording. If I, if I told you to say I'm using a sampling rate of, I've changed now from 16, I'm using 44.1 kilohertz. And I tell you to say I'm using, by default, I'm using a bit depth of 16. And I'm using two channels, and the length of the recording is going to be one hour long. You should be able to calculate the theoretical size of the resulting wave file. What's the, the number of signals um, that are used to transmit the, the sound, essentially? Stereo means you're transmitting two signals, right? So you just plug in two here on the channels, right? Sometimes you might just uh, send through one, one signal, so you're using one channel. I think mono or something. Yeah. Right? Uh, all right, so something else I... Maybe as part of the, for this to make more sense, we shall have on the convert, have you guys convert these to different bit rates and um, there's a, I'll upload the Zambia National Anthem in, I mean, on, on Moodle or something and then you can kind of like experiment with it and see the effects of, I guess, reducing the bit rate, altering the, the sampling rates and whatnot so that you, you notice uh, what's happening to the size and the quality of the audio. But, um, but but what what you what you should know though is that uh, and I don't know if there are sound engineers here or people that play with sound. What you should know is that different audio formats will sometimes uh, they'll, they'll sometimes use like compression techniques that will result in as much smaller size, but the, the quality is going to be poor, right? Like MP3, for instance. The quality that you list, the, the quality of the audio that's encoded using MP3 is not as good as something like flat, for instance, right? But the size is slightly larger for a flat file. So if, if you, if you have um, high quality headsets, you notice that the music that you listen to in MP3 has a much lower quality than something in WAV format or flat format. Right? Okay, so the question then is, um, we can repeat this if it doesn't make sense. The question then is that, now that we know how data is encoded, right? No, no, no. What, what, what don't you understand? No. It's okay if I say everything. Sorry? It's okay if I say everything. If you what? Is it on how sound is encoded, how video is encoded, or? So your, your computer has a, a sound card, right? We know this. Your computer also has a microphone, right? We know this because you, you can view your, your smartphone as being a computer. You know it has a microphone because you need to speak to people, you need to call them, right? Your computer also has speakers. When you're speaking into the microphone integrated with your computer, what's happening behind the scenes is that the sound card is going to convert the sound wave or the sound, what you're what you're talking about into digital form, right? So there's an analog to digital converter. If you store or if you record yourself and you want to play back what you've recorded, what your computer is going to do is going to have to do the opposite of what you've done, right? 
convert what you've stored in digital form into analog so that you listen to it. But the conversion from analog to digital goes through a systematic process that involves two key things. The rate at which you are capturing what you are recording, how fast you are capturing it, which is um, specified in heads, or otherwise referred to as a sampling rate, and the, the bit depth, right? So how many values you are going to be, how many different range of values you are going to be capturing? Why do you need the bit depth? Because a computer understands ones and zeros. If it understands ones and zeros, we have to think of what we're capturing in terms of bits. Do you understand this now? The higher the bit depth, the more accurate what you're capturing because you have a much wider range of values. The higher the sampling rate, the more, um, well, the better the accuracy because, the better the accuracy because the number of samples that you are capturing is significantly larger. Why is this important? Why is the sampling rate, why is the much higher sampling rate important? Because the reconstruction, converting from digital to analog, is going to depend on the values that you've captured. In fact, the, the reconstruction, right? So you can, in, in literature, you probably find people saying, okay, this reconstruction is like, um, maybe here and here and there. The reconstruction is like, uh, it's, it has like square steps, right? This will help you understand how, how the quality of what you're capturing is compromised because it's not, going to be, it's not going to be a continuous line anymore. You're not working with the same exact values that um, correspond with the sound that you're recording. Uh, just a second, just a second. So, um, just observe for a short while here, and I hope there's no class coming in. Uh, All right, so, so let's say, so I've, I've changed now. I'm, I'm recording direct from my machine, right? So I'll, I don't know if you're seeing this. I'm recording myself, and you notice that what, what Audacity does is, um, if you look at what's happening up on top there, what Audacity has is, depending on the pitch of my voice, if I scream a lot louder, you notice that this is the waveform I'm talking about, right? What? So this is the sound wave that I'm talking about. Now this is just visualizing what's happening here. So. As when Audacity is recording my sound there, what is doing behind this, what my computer is doing behind the scenes is it's taking note of the, the values and I think the configured something rate there is probably, could be wrong, let's just assume it's 16 and I'm using, or let's assume it's 44.1 kilohertz and I'm using 16 as a bit depth. The conversion, right, as I'm recording this, there the are samples that are being taken in any given, I mean, in one second, right? So based on how quickly I am speaking, the corresponding values associated with what I am saying are going to be more if I use a much larger sampling rate. Sorry? This is just, it's visualizing what's happening behind this. It's not like exactly the same. I was hoping this would, would help you understand, but clearly it's not. Okay, do, do you understand how we are, just wait a minute, do you understand how we are capturing the, the values first? Or, or why it's important, or the significance of the bit depth. You understand the significance of the bit depth, right? The, the accuracy, the accuracy of the values that we are associating to the values we are capturing is going to be more if we, if we have a much larger bit depth. Right? You understand that? You un do you understand why a much higher value of the sampling rate is important? Because the values that you are going to capture are going to be more. If, if uh, it's, it's like playing connect the dots here. If the values 
It's the values that you are capturing us slightly more, right? When you're reconstructing this, and I think we've done this in like graph paper or something where they told us to say you have this graph paper and then you have this, these points, 2,3 or whatnot, 4,5, and then draw the graph of this thing, right? What we're doing when we're converting from digital form to analog is it's like we're drawing, the values we captured, it's like we're drawing, we are redrawing the graph. When you redraw the graph, the, the, resulting, the resulting graph is not going to be the exact shape of the original waveform. Why? Because you're drawing it using much fewer points. As I'm speaking right now, there are a number of points, right, associated with what I'm saying. A lot of them, but we can only pick so many. What pitch? Sorry? What pitch now? Which one? The sampling rate. If you're using two hertz, you're going to pick how many values? Two values. Five hertz, five values. 10 hertz, 10 values. 44,000, 44.1 thousand hertz, 44.1 hertz, 44,100 values in any given second. When you have 44, compare two values and 44,000. Or compare two values and 8,000 values for eight, eight hertz. What you're going to draw using 8,000 points is going to be much closer to the original than what you're going to draw using two values. Do you understand this? Yes. Now, sampling rate. Bit depth. If you are using a much smaller bit depth, the, the values that you're going to be using to, to capture whatever it is you're capturing are going to be fewer. When they are fewer, you go through a process of your quantizing, right? When they are fewer, you're going to have to approximate the value to the, you round it off to the nearest integer or something. If I'm using fewer, if, if I'm using a much lower bit depth, it means the values, the range of values I'm working with are going to be fewer. If they are fewer and what I'm trying to capture, I'm, I'm capturing these samples, and the sample I'm trying to capture is here, but the value that I can capture is either this or that. What I'll have to do is approximate what this is by rounding it off to the nearest integer of value. I'll probably round it off to this. Because I've rounded it off, what I'm going to draw is going to be not accurate at all. But if I'm using a much larger bit depth, I'll probably have values here. So the value that I'm going to round this um, to is going to be at least closer to the, to the actual value. Do you understand this? This is how sound is converted from analog to digital and back. Yes. Yes, yes, this is exactly it. So this is, this is time, this is amplitude, right? Um, I, I'm glad that we now understand how data is encoded, which really is, um, oh, what happened? Somebody switched it off? So, so, so I have a question. Yes? They said that the web, the web is much clearer than an MP3 file, is it? Yes. So what happens when you're converting a web into an MP3? Does it have to be so, so, reduced to that? No, so you're, you're, so you're in fact, uh, there's a, the next part we're supposed to discuss is, uh, where are you going? The next part that we're discussing is supposed to be, uh, after we look at how computers know what type of data it is, we're going to look at compression. I think it's important that we do that. What, what's happening when you're converting from wave to, to MP3 is exactly what happens when you're converting from TIFF or from DMG to JPEG, you're compressing the file. And what you're doing when you compress the file is you are, you are removing some of the bits because you're trying to reduce the size. When you remove some of the bits, you're messing up the quality. So the, the, the reason why MP3 is a terrible format, if you're an audiophile, right, if you're a person who is cautious, or depending on the type of music you listen to, if you're cautious of what you're listening to, you notice that when you listen to a WAV file, and let's say you're watching a video that has birds that are tweeting in the background, you actually listen to them do that, right? Loud and clear. But if you have an MP3 format, you probably want to listen to some of those small little discrete sounds in the background, right? I don't know if we can find an example here to try and illustrate this. But the reason you can't is because you're compromising the quality for what? For size. 
Why is size important? When a computer processes this information, at some stage, you're, not, you're storing this information, at some stage you're going to have to send it to other people. When you're storing it, you know that you're going to need more space. The lower the size, the more things you're going to store. When you're sending it to other people, you know that there's bandwidth involved. The smaller the size, the less the bandwidth you're going to use. Don't send me a WAV file, or don't send me a FLAC file. Send me an MP3 file. Because it turns out that I'll still be able to listen to whatever it is you're sending. But if you're a sound engineer, right, you want to make sure that you're working with WAV files or FLAC files, right? As you're manipulating the audio and whatnot. Yes. Are we fine now? OK, so the question now is, now that we know how computers encode data, right? Sound, text, video, everything else. The question then is, how does a computer get to know what sort of data it's working with? Or how, how, do, we, how do we know, how does a computer know that this is an image? If you have this stream of ones and zeros, how will a computer know that this is an image? Or text, because this could be anything, right? Uh, as far as the computer is concerned, it's just going to see a continuous stream of ones and zeros, right? Um, uh, and this could be anything. It could be text, you know, it could be voice, sound, it could be video, it could be an image, right? Uh, it turns out this is why um, software applications are important. This is why extensions are important. If I send you a file that has a .pdf, you immediately know that for you to process that, and processing that means viewing it, right? For that to happen, you need to use um, application software that is able to render a PDF file. If I send you a .mkv, you immediately know it's a video file. You could use Word doc, Word, uh, I mean, uh, Microsoft Word, to say open, right? File open, and then go to, uh, go and try and open the M M MKV file, video file. Word is dumb enough to actually open it for you. But, yeah, but the problem is that what you're going to end up seeing is something that doesn't make sense. Gibberish, yes. Right, because the computer doesn't know any better. It, it depends on you to tell it what to do, what to process. This is why extensions are important. This is why it's important for you to explicitly tell someone to say what I'm sending you is an image or it's a video file so that they know exactly what sort of application to use to be able to see what you've sent them. Yes? Sir, but last time you refused that file uh, extensions are not broken down. Yeah, but are they? Are they not? <laughs> but don't tell you what the data is all about. It's convention. By convention, when I, by convention, well, back in the day, by convention, when you saw someone putting on a pair of trousers, you knew it was a male, right? So. But it doesn't, you understand what I mean? If someone is putting on a dress, it's a female. You understand what It's convention. It doesn't mean you should do that. But it helps people better understand what's going on. So the extension is just convention. It's not part of metadata, right? No, it's not. Yeah, they are giving you an, it's giving you an idea. So what's your argument? Oh. I could, I could send you today, I could decide to say, I'm going to change my convention of my slides. My slides are no longer going to have an extension. I'll still be able to send the slides to you. And you will know their slides and you'll be able to open them using PDF. Right, click open with Acrobat Read or something. It will work. It's not metadata, right? We, we had a discussion about what metadata is. Where, where are people going to? It's 20 minutes. It's oh. But there's no one else coming. Let's do this. Uh, we, have, we have an exam on, on, on Friday. This is why this needs to sink in. You better understand how this works, though, if I were you. There's a reason why we're doing this. There's an exam which is going to be based on this. Right, Mr. Well. Sorry? is all the encoding. Yeah, it's on this. People want us to, to stop. Uh, hopefully this makes sense, the way sound works. I mean, we'll finish off this 
you know, data types and compression. Please get them, yes. And uh, excuse me, uh, you should have access to, I, I forgot this. I shared links to um, the take home quizzes have been graded. There are comments in there. And some of the comments are in uppercase because it's irritating, right? File names and whatnot. So please go through them if you have concerns about how the grading was done. Do come and see us during office hours and we shall fix the problem.